so dude, uh, welcome to the show again. Thanks for joining me. This is round two for us. I uh, really appreciate your time. Uh, and how are you doing? Yeah, no, it's my pleasure to be on. We had a really good uh, conversation last time, so it's uh, only reasonable to uh, to follow up. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm good. I have loaded up. Uh, last time I said I had uh, sun maxed my balls. Uh, <laughs> didn't quite, <laughs> didn't quite have the opportunity, but I have loaded up with a uh, with a forest walk and uh, I've fruit maxed a bit. So uh, cool. in a smoothie, some blueberries, uh, yeah. some bananas, etc. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready to rock. Awesome. Uh, do you have a particular morning routine? Uh, usually I have my morning coffee. So during the summer I had a black coffee uh, and of course some water. Uh, mm -hmm. Going out on the balcony, getting some morning sun and yes, of course, sun maxing my balls. Yep. Uh, it's uh, the, the balcony is built in such a way that from the street, uh, no one can see. So uh, no oh, one knows perfect. what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a hack having a property that has like the perfect setup of walls or fences that no one actually can see. And if you're nude, like it's such a game changer. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and, uh, you know, yeah, I, I know you have talked about this uh, a lot of times I mentioned it as well, but it uh, for anyone who might be new here, it might sound like a, bit <laughs> of a joke when you say like, oh, son, max your balls. But uh, it is quite nice, actually. It is nice. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's more than nice. It's like, uh, let's break it down because I don't know if I've talked about it actually on the podcast uh, uh, in depth, but um, wh what do you feel? Because I've posted about it. I, I've got a recent amount of uh, a few no, new followers on Instagram. So I posted on that again because um, that's a big audience that wouldn't have heard the kind of Sonia Balls spiel, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, I wrote a little post about it. And I think, you know, it's really making its way into the public consciousness. Like it's a well-known meme across most internet subcultures now, I would say. Yeah. Which yeah, is good. It is. And I think... Yeah, it is good. It is good. It's um, it's almost like the the bro science is uh, triumphing over mm. science because yes. especially science now, is so trash at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it is. So uh, I mean, a few years ago, it was in 2015, I think. I made a video saying the crusade against bro science, where I wanted to be, you know, only evidence based uh, knowledge yeah. would be would be on my channel. But now, since so much of the science is so compromised by yeah i mean i i won't go into the whole covid thing but <laughs> everyone knows that the 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 science is uh, very corrupt uh which then leaves us to explore a lot of these things that maybe they maybe they don't have a hundred scientific studies behind them but if we have some uh some great men back in the day i think you even mentioned benjamin franklin um mm. sunbathing naked yeah, uh, yeah and you have some study from germany uh, from a uh, hundred years ago or something it's it's worth exploring because we don't know there are so many uh, health hacks biohacks that we can do yeah uh, which do not have uh, a whole wealth of scientific research so um it's really fun it's uh, exciting times to uh, to live um uh, and to explore and to come up with this uh, biohacks. Yes, biohacking is probably like, I don't, you can call it a hobby because you research into it, you test out the things yourself. Like it's such a rewarding thing to pursue, you know, and just slowly increase your knowledge of, you know, if I get an anxiety attack, um, or just feel anxious rather, because I don't think, you know, majority of people feel anxious, perhaps maybe don't have anxiety attacks, but if you're feeling anxious, you can go right to the breath, just slow your breathing down and deepen your breath and do 10 mindful breaths, like less of a biohack and more of just like a, I guess, a principle that, you know, cultures have passed down, but that's such an easy, like you don't need anti-anxiety medication. Uh, medication you just need to chill out and breathe and use the power of the breath and your awareness to kind of settle um, you know that's a biohack you learn about so you you're putting together all these things and all this knowledge which is interesting like once you get the bug you, and uh, because I think it 
it uh, furthers the progress of your body and you have more energy or you just feel better. Uh, so you kind of add it to your schedule or regime and that as a hobby, something you can be spending time doing and learning new things, as we know, is the, the fountain of youth for your brain. So biohacking, I love and, and sunning your balls is one of those ones like... It, it sounds a bit strange, but, you know, it, it, it's as simple as we know the sun is good for us to produce vitamin D um, and it's locally produced in the cells that receive the sunlight, right? So if your balls have never been outside like they would in the natural world, you know, lions got their balls out in the sun all the time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting that sunlight on cells that need it to operate their best and most efficiently on your balls, which are the centers of your kind of hormone production in the body. So it, it really is like if you want to maximize your muscular potential, your energy, all of that, just give your balls the vitamin D they need to operate correctly. And it's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be this esoteric thing, even though it's, you know, it, it has a very primal um, energy that kind of flows through you when it happens. You know, it's those gut feeling things that feel good to do and make you feel a million bucks. That is bro science, but that is the most pure science because you're experimenting yourself and you have the study where it's your body so you know it's going to be most relevant like if you take a study that did x things to some people if they're not the same kind of bodily makeup as you or not as strong as you then you can get a result that doesn't quite accurately portray reality of what you would experience if you had this did the same thing so the bro science, which is just colloquially showing, uh, sharing these ideas and then the individual going in and being like, hey, I'm going to try this out and, you know, getting deeper and deeper into that. Yeah, definitely. And and something to be said about uh, sun maxing and, uh, and sunscreen. I mean, if you think about it, logically speaking, uh, and this is something that struck me uh, a while back as well, that, you know, OK, skin cancer is... Um, is rampant but why didn't we have skin cancer 300 years ago uh i mean it's not natural to yep. <laughs> evolutionary speaking cover yourself in in some oil just to be yep. out in the sun yep. uh and then of course when we look deeper into it and then yeah big big enough scandal uh, during this summer when a lot of sunscreens got taken mm -hmm. out from the market because they provoke skin cancer and i mean many of these things they are they are quite um, understandable if you just look at it from a uh, yeah an evolutionary perspective or just a reasonable perspective. Same thing yeah. with um, you know during the eighties the the war on fat, uh, which was heavily funded by the sugar industry. Yeah, I mean if we've eaten something for millennia uh, in all cultures in uh, all over the world, mm -hmm. you have uh, Mongols eating in a certain way during the Middle Ages. Uh, there is, um, I think, um, I don't quite recall the name of the book, but there is a book and there's a passage where uh, the author compares the uh, the Chinese uh, versus the Mongols during the invasion of Genghis Khan. Yeah, and says that the Mongols, yeah, ate a lot of dairy meat uh whereas the chinese ate uh, gruel and porridge and uh and stuff like that not good and of course if we look at yeah exactly not good, <laughs> not good at all so not the for mongols warriors were, yeah exactly the the mongols were powerhouses uh big muscular strong bones mm -hmm. the chinese were prone to disease and of course this goes well into every other uh, grandmother knowledge there is uh, yeah. i remember when i was small that my grandmother when she she prepared something for us she always used a lot of butter and it almost shocked me because it was so much but yeah. for her in her wisdom that wasn't uh, her wisdom wasn't corrupted by a lot of studies saying that mm. fat is bad yeah uh, so i think many of these things uh, as you post about as well going back being a bit more primal it's mm. uh, and it makes us feel good and if it makes us feel good perhaps we don't need a hundred studies saying why it's good it yeah exactly it's it's intuition and when you kind of can access your intuition and develop that connection with yourself and whatever label you want to put on it that connection between yourself and you know source the god um the soul where you get these intuitive thoughts that just come into your brain and you can learn to listen to them more rather than rejecting them and following whatever path 
you know, acting on your gut, you know, what does your gut say? Boom, do that. Or why do you get a thought that's like, Hey, you should say something to that person as you walk past them. Right. That's Mm -hmm. this intuitive kind of magical, uh, sense of life that I've found to be true in my life. When you, you know, when, when you finally fix your health, uh, if you've been unhealthy or living in an unhealthy way, or even just the healthier you get, um, you develop this feeling when your body's fine, it's working good. Um, you know, you're not blocked up, you're not tired, angry or hurt or anything. You know, you seem to just develop an awareness of this connection more. And when you're more spiritually kind of pure and are able to meditate and things like that, you can develop this sense where, you know, you'll get random thoughts, but if you pursue them, uh, then that's where the magic happens. You know, the synchronicities and all that kind of things. Have you felt that in your life? Uh, yeah, definitely. And this is also one of these things that um, have appeared as of recent years. You know, the gut, yeah. listening to your gut is is such a massive thing. It's like having a second brain. Uh, yeah, you know, growing up for all of us uh, in the West today, uh, atheist societies uh, and stuff like that, only the brain matters and the gut is okay you feel something bad in your gut then it's uh, then the mainstream society would say like oh just repress this uh, feeling because it's uh, based on prejudice or whatever it might be but then when you realize that the gut is extremely intelligent and has developed uh, i mean the gut feeling uh, it's mm-hmm. developed to keep us safe over millennia and once you start paying attention to the gut feeling you will feel a lot better and you will avoid a lot of things so if your gut tells you that something is off if you go into a social situation and you can feel mm. in the air something is up um yeah then then it might be a good idea to um to take that warning sign seriously and the same mm. thing of course if you spend time with positive people who project a positive aura yeah it's mm. good for you to spend time uh, yeah. with those individuals so the gut feeling is uh, yeah absolutely massive i i trust my instincts very much now um also brings us into a one of these things that even i up until a few years ago i thought was bro science or pseudoscience uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, physiognomy uh, and of course yeah. you can look on someone and see okay this this individual because of the way he lives he looks uh very very unhealthy and bad yeah and you know just as if we're talking about self-improvement one uh, little victory it yields another little victory and then you go on a upwards uh, positive spiral same thing uh, there is a downwards spiral and mm. a lot of these individuals who might be look unwell they are in that position because they are surrounded by negativity negative thoughts and uh, when you view yourself in that light in a negative light you view the world in that sense as well Mm -hmm. which then leads them to have uh, yet to be to be less good individuals yeah so um yeah you you can actually be judgmental upon uh, the appearance of uh, of other people uh and this is especially important to point out if we're grown up in um uh, you know in sweden's case our socialist country with a strong emphasis on the equality of everyone and then hollywood culture where the the athletic jock is always the bad guy and the skinny nerd is the good guy <laughs> but uh, in reality it's the opposite because of how you view yourself and yeah usually that skinny nerd um i'm also a nerd but i'm not a negative skinny nerd yeah uh, but you have the sense of uh, uh, resentment, resentment uh, that views others as having okay, these these athletic jocks they are so popular and successful because they have they have taken from me and I am in this bad position because mm. because not of my own making because others have taken from me. Yeah. Uh, and and it is common to see that sort of also crab in a bucket mentality among those who haven't gotten that taste of self-improvement for example biohacking where you um, Mm -hmm. where you understand that ultimately your own life is dependent upon your own choices yeah exactly and you know it really comes down to you want to look at it as a model right and the model can seem silly but for everyone that's tried it and whichever way that it works your perspective on the world is what kind of world that you receive back and 
you know, the ancient hermetic principle as within, so without is talking about the mind. And if you, you know, if you think everything goes well for me, um, you know, everything's going to work out. Uh, I love that person. I love other people. I'm happy for myself, but, you know, grateful for things, uh, happy for other people when they succeed. That breeds a kind of, whether it's like you want to think, oh, dopamine is better in your brain or whatever, having positive thoughts increases the positive things that happen in your life. And it's as simple as that. You know, the, the levels of electromagnetic frequencies that you're literally emitting uh, in terms of your vibrational state within, other people can sense that. You know, like, what's the vibe of this guy? Everyone intuitively feels that through the kind of electromagnetic fields that we can't, you know, see with our eyes, but we sense with our heart. It's the, the electromagnetic yeah, frequency kind of epicenter of the body is the heart. So the kind of the gut feeling is, is more of a primal thing if, if you're in a dangerous situation, but listening to your heart is that intuitive kind of spiritual connection. Um, and when you open that up and kind of just try and do better by other people, that's how you improve your life. And you can never improve it blaming other people for anything ever because it just gives away your power whether or not that, that okay maybe it was valid that this person did something bad to you and that's truly why you're in the position that you are even if that's happened by giving it that label and making that the part of the story of your life that you tell yourself means you can never improve this situation because you're externalizing that which is, you know, you're literally imprisoning yourself in this fake reality because of your belief about a situation that happened. And that's incredible to me that like people keep themselves in their own mental prisons until they realize what like forgiving and all those kinds of things do for your mind. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we're two really good examples of this. First and foremost, we have the, the truly black pilling sort of incel online culture where people discuss uh, on certain forums and in certain groups about women and they convince each other about the fact that unless you are a wealthy uh, chad, you can never attain any any success with women. Yeah. And of course, if they tell themselves that, it will project out yeah. whenever they meet women. Yeah. Because women are uh, usually very good at picking up um, these type of signals. So they can yeah. spot from a mile away if a guy is confident or if he's um, insecure. And of course, if you are continuously living in that, as you say, prison, the prison that says that, okay, I need to be all of these unbelievable things to even have a chance with yeah. women, they will pick up on that. And the second example, is about the the state of of Western civilization, and I know that if we look on Telegram groups or even videos, I've made this experiment myself. That if mm. I if I have a video saying a brutal black pill, it will reach maybe fifty thousand views. But yeah. if I have a video saying uh, a good white pill, it will yeah. reach eight thousand or something. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I made the experiment in in. 2019 and then i made another video a brutal black pill so it was sort of like a clickbait video because i yeah. talked about porn uh but it's quite interesting to see what people are drawn to and of course if you if you have a young guy continuously getting told that everything is hopeless uh, our civilization is doomed and you will never find a, a good woman and you will never attain any success because the odds are stacked against you uh yeah that becomes his reality and it will impact how he views the world and he mm. views the world in a very sulky manner and then people will see a loser basically yeah um and the same thing of course Again, with women, they can either see um, a normal, happy, healthy guy uh, with a sense of humor who views life in a life-affirming way, or they can see someone who is a bit downtrodden. And of course, they don't like it because it's uh, 
not evolutionary speaking it's not a good idea to be attracted to someone who has yep. a defeatist attitude yep. uh, so that's why exactly. I'm yeah I'm always I'm always warning people to not spend too much time in those type of environments then of course it is good to read up on uh, what is going on so we're not naive and living with our heads be in aware clouds, but, but don't let it you know, color your worldview uh, for the negative because there's no yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's that's the aim of this media, right? Um, a lot of the time, you know, some of the stories literally aren't real. They're written by AI bots. You know, I saw this last week and they can just use headlines. You know, AI is good enough now that it can kind of create a fake article that might support one uh, position or the other right and then a headline is generated from that it's sent to social media and it'll be one of these things that we see on twitter where you're like oh fuck that that's so horrible and mm. you know retweet it and you know it, it annoys you because you know it's a horrible thing let's say or something you would prefer like a like you said a, a black pill kind of a bit of info um and it might not even be real you know and like that's the trouble with the AI kind of algorithms that are training us to, to be on Twitter. Like you said, more hits for the negative video of you means that negative stories that go against your beliefs or whatever uh, is going to keep people, it's going to get more engagement and keep them on their phone more. So there's a, a real financial incentive for these companies uh, that, you know, our tech companies, they can create headlines and feed them out in, in such a way that's going to keep you scrolling and scrolling and looking at more ads and everything. And it's a, it's a real, real issue to the point where you can't, you have to just shut off a lot of it, um, make the best decisions you can to help yourself, which is ultimately how we help the society. Like this is what I mean. Being, aware and upset about these things okay if that's if it's real you look it up it's real and it's a genuine issue in your community are you doing something about it are you going to someone and your local representative maybe or trying to help out the situation no you're just getting upset about it uh from a news headline so there really is no point to do that and if you're one of the rare people that is seeing these things and continuously acting uh to try and help whatever cause it is, then great. But that's not many of us, I would say, and all the power to those people uh, that do, you know, the activists that really kind of truly are working against this stuff in the field. Uh, but that's not most people. So the doom scrolling and even letting any of the negative kind of news media in your head is them winning in a way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, this is something I thought a lot about over the last years and I don't know exactly when it was in 2017 or 18 or something I came to the conclusion that in in making political content on YouTube you can attract two type of people um, one is the doom scrollers they're only ever interested in when something bad happens and yep. They only want to get their confirmation bias saying that, oh, the world is so messed up, we can't do anything, everything yeah. is lost. And then they have that rageaholic addiction that they only want their latest horrible news. Yeah. Uh, and of course, they outnumber the productive people by, I don't know how many percent, uh, maybe nine to one or something, ten to one. Um, uh, and then you have the, the productive people who will be interested in actual solutions, who will work to create something. And of course, in this particular scenario, when we are in a, in a culture war, yeah, it takes time and effort to create a counterculture. So it's not as easy to just say, yeah, everything is hopeless, let's, um, let's not do anything. Uh, but if you portray, if you put out a positive message, those individuals will be drawn to you and if you want to create something uh that is the type of message you need to you need to put out because if we want to enact any type of change yeah we can't do it while attracting these um resentful losers basically yeah um so um so yeah it's a it's a can be a fine line between being uh being honest about what's going on and the type of aesthetics you're you're promoting and then of course for your own well-being uh i scaled down on twitter for example uh a few years ago or maybe even one year ago it was mostly only political content but now i kept it to maybe 10 percent being political content and the mm -hmm. latest news and then it's 
yeah, some some self improvement, some historical knowledge, some esoteric knowledge, whatever it yeah. might be. Uh, because in my case, I mean, I I, I know what's going on. Uh, I don't need to be reminded of the yeah. the latest horrible news in Sweden or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so then it's more useful to yeah partake in content that lets me be more happy and productive. Because then I can portray a, a more attractive message in turn. Yes, it's it's interesting you say that because I think with with content you get the audience that the media is aimed at, right? So if you're always producing political content, you're going to get a political audience. Um, if you are always putting out nice self-improvement stuff, just, you know, there's enough doom bullshit on the internet, you know, and as we're both creators, we know that like if we can put out a little bit of information that helps people and, you know, helps them figure out something in their life, that's infinitely more rewarding than, um, you know, attracting maybe more viral views, but being political in a, you know, we don't want to be political. The only way we're kind of getting out of this is building a counterculture, like you said. Um, and I think we're seeing that very much. So, uh, at least on social media, uh, with the kind of group that we have going, uh, of guys that are just like, want to improve themselves, want to help others, um, want to promote the message of living a healthier life and not, not just guys either as well, like there's girls and just this online community that isn't the vapid, um, just kind of dopamine frying bullshit that is a lot of social media. And I think that people are, as you said, uh, you know, the, the, the culture is growing and it's very cool to see because that ultimately is uh, if we get more people living healthier and making better choices for themselves and not living in this negative world fueled of, uh, you know, AI and all of that, then that is going to, that's the way out. Yeah, definitely. And uh, to to turn back to our um, uh, about uh, science and and the big pharma and stuff, uh, we don't have that much of a problem with it in Sweden because Sweden has always been quite a healthy population. But if we look on maybe good old America or something, where you have a you know one of the great enemies of of the people is just unhealth. Uh, yeah. And by uh, by living healthier. Uh, there are so many different things that will be combated just by doing that. Uh, same thing with porn. Uh, I mean, it's it's a hard enemy to to combat, but uh, it, the only way to do it is is not. It a lot of things can be done politically, but when it comes to the supply and demand, they will always always meet almost always meet each other. Uh, so the only thing you can really do to combat it is to to remove the demand for it. And that is where the culture comes in uh, to say that, you know what, porn is bad for you uh, instead of just uh, banning it from above because if, the, if, people, if it doesn't come from within someone, it will be really bad to uh, get rid of. Uh, same thing, of course, if we're talking about unhealth and um, various uh, uh, sicknesses and disease. Mm. Uh, if it can be combated from, from within, uh, by living better yeah that's a big a big uh, a big target that's removed even before we have gotten into political power uh, so there is a lot of things to be done and then of course if we're talking about the the various regimes they want the population to be uh, docile uh, submissive slaves addicted to all manner of things addicted to dopamine fast food uh, addicted to medication because they live so unhealthily so they get Alcohol. Disease. Yeah, alcohol as well, various drugs. Um, so there is actually, it is a political action to a certain extent to promote self-improvement because if everyone gets into it, if all young guys and many young girls, they they embrace that sort of lifestyle at an early age there are so many problems that we won't have to deal with later on and then of course a, a happy and healthy productive population who are concerned with uh, their lives with their well-being they will be much harder to push around yeah um but if you have a a population that is overweight addicted to uh, various big pharma things yeah um yeah, it, it will be easier to control. So the two, they go hand in hand uh, to a large uh, extent, I'd say. 100%. And I think 
what has been good about this whole situation is it's finally put into the global consciousness, the mainstream narrative that big pharma is really just out to profit. And yeah. the kind of these treatments that are going out, um, they don't work. <laughs> they can make you sicker. They're made by companies that have had unscrupulous pasts and really understanding how much money they're fucking making. You know, mm. it, it, it's billions and billions of dollars. Uh, and this has been happening for decades. Big Pharma, you know, killing doctors that said, hey, uh, this cancer treatment doesn't work. You know, with cancer treatments, pharmaceutical companies want to fund treatments that make them money. It's an investment. So yeah. why would they actually try and find a cure for cancer? Because they cure someone of cancer, they can't make any money off them. And, oh, yeah, everyone's cured of cancer. Cool. No, they want treatments that are profitable, that claim to do something, but rather than looking at the root cause of, okay, why did this person develop a cancerous uh, cell, uh, usually from living in an unhealthy way, you know, cut off from nature, like, animals in the wild don't get cancer and we're seeing it rise more and more and more because people are just living unhealthy lives and all of the things that we're told are bad <laughs> are actually good and what's healthy is uh, really really bad for you and you know the global health is not increasing it hasn't been increasing for a long time and some countries are worse than others but what it shows you is that the modern life is actually the wrong way to do it you know, you need to be outside in the sun. Skin cancer rates are increasing, but people are spending less time outside and using more sunscreen. That's all you need to know. You know, it's it's the blue light radiation from being indoors all day. It's not getting vitamin D from the sun and not developing healthy skin from that, uh, which is causing the melanomas, not the sun itself. You know, unless you really burn yourself multiple, multiple times and no one's doing that. Yeah, definitely. Um uh, then also something to uh, sort of like a, a thing you can't make big pharma can't make money out of promoting fasting but fasting as yep. anyone uh, will say it's it's great for the health but again uh, if um, if they were serious about promoting health and combating disease and uh, all of these different things they would put in the school mm -hmm. curriculum yeah do a 40 hour fast every month and you your health yeah. will be better but again there isn't any money to be made out of it whereas a um i know a booster vaccine every every year or uh <laughs> antidepressant yeah, yes exactly it's as <laughs> subscription your, your health is dependent <laughs> on a subscription uh, from from big pharma uh and same thing with antidepressants instead of looking at okay you are depressed here you go here are some pills to take instead of just looking at aha okay uh how much do you train how much do you sleep how much do you get out in the sun how yep. do you eat mm -hmm. um, all of these different factors how much time do you spend with friends and family uh and then someone might say oh you know i, I work in a cubicle uh <laughs> and then i go i mean i go to work at six o'clock in the morning i don't see the sun ever because i'm stuck in a in yep. a box inside at some office yep. uh, for a company that doesn't care who i am mm -hmm. uh uh, then lockdowns so i can't see my family yeah of course someone is going to be unhappy it's not a mystery mm -hmm. uh, and then it's so baffling to see that instead these doctors instead of looking at lifestyle factors they're just uh, printing out a recipe for an antidepressant uh completely insane and i mean this is something we have in sweden as well that um many many people are on antidepressants and uh, yeah. it could be it could have been avoided but uh, but alas Right, it's you say baffling and it's it's counterintuitive, but it's fairly understandable why it's happening because of the money being made. You know, the doctors yep. are sponsored by these companies to say, hey, for every 20 people that you give these painkillers to, you'll get $10,000. Like, that's the reality of it. So yeah. the doctor profession, third leading cause of death in the United States, by the way, is mistakes by doctors. So do you really want to go see one? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's really been corrupted. And whatever the, the profession started as, the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm, uh, that doesn't exist anymore. And 
unless you know there's i think there's also a resurgence because people know of trying to take your own health into your own hands because doctors a lot of the time don't have the answers or even very well-meaning uh general physicians that you go to and ask hey man i'm, I'm feeling that shit you know they they spend two days of their entire curriculum about sleep you know in, mm. in the general kind of medicine curriculum that's not enough and sleep, it, as we know, is one of the most important things for health uh, to really dial in uh, before anything else. So if someone's not sleeping right, there's no amount of anything external that you can do that's going to make you feel better. Uh, but you can sell a pill uh, to fuck people's heads up more. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, uh, I would say also that uh, something something to keep in mind uh, <laughs> is that taking care of your health just to avoid the um the uh, the health system even in uh you know up until recently sweden was uh, a good country in in a lot of ways but today whatever you do try to avoid getting any sort of contact with the swedish healthcare system because it is so extremely bad uh and when when you get to that stage uh, I haven't been there myself uh, in a long time, but um, you realize that the, the old saying, your uh, your health is your wealth. It really yeah. is because there yeah. isn't that much they can do for you ultimately. And they are often very incompetent. So you would be better off by just looking over the lifestyle factors so that you don't end up there later on. Um, uh, yeah, some some uh, <laughs> some insights there. But to go back to um, to the sleep, it's absolutely true. Uh, some people might use caffeine to compensate for a bad sleep, but yep. I can tell everyone, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> you don't feel as good as you would. Um, I mean, you can, of course, be be a bit more alert. And of course, if you have, uh, if you need to stay awake for something, but something that doesn't require full attention, yeah, then it might be something. But um Okay, so this is a bit of a tangent, but I wanted to get into no, it. Anyway, go ahead. It's about yeah, uh, it's about when you train in the uh, in the afternoon or in the evening and pre-workout products and coffee. Now, of course, if you want to optimize everything about your life, sleep is the number one priority. Uh, to try to get eight hours of sleep each night, um, more if you can, of course, uh, and try to get to bed in a reasonable hour so your circadian rhythm isn't all messed up. Yep. Now, if you train late at night and you use a pre-workout, say if you train after work at six or seven in the evening and you take a pre-workout, sure, it might benefit your training that session, but if it makes you sleep less, it will reduce your ability to build the actual muscle and then you will yeah. feel sluggish the day after and then you will depend on even more caffeine uh, the day after and even without drinking any caffeine if you train late in the evening mm -hmm. I did this uh, last year I trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu quite late in the evening because that was the only time they had uh, yeah. uh, they had the session uh, so I had to do it that autumn now I haven't done it in a while primarily because of how it affected my sleep because yeah. I had a hard time falling asleep before 12 in the night. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, I had to say to myself, okay, which is more important for me to be productive so I can run my companies, write my yeah. book, uh, stuff like that, or is it more important for me to get my training in? So I said, okay, no, uh, I will train in gym uh, earlier in the day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I just wanted to have that said. Yeah, yeah, well, people... I've gotten a few messages about this recently um, with people that can't sleep at night and a lot of the time it's because they're training in the evening and whether or not you have caffeine um, as well, just the fact that it's amping you up and getting your heart rate and it, if you're training in martial arts, you know, it's a very aroused state and you, you want to be relaxed and calmed down the later your evening goes in order to promote the best quality sleep because you might be spending eight hours in bed uh but if it's not quality it's not helping and like you said if you're if you've been training then even if you fall asleep it's not optimal because your cortisol spikes your heart rate might be uh <clears throat> higher as well uh so the other thing is the window of sleep that you're getting has got to be at a reasonable hour the same amount of sleep that starts at 12 or you know even 10 or 11 uh 
that same amount of sleep, but shifted forward, so you're going to bed at about nine, is a better quality sleep. Same amount of time you're sleeping, so you know people say, oh, I don't have time to sleep. That's such bullshit. But yeah, <laughs> you know, just either make the priority and cut some other bullshit out. Don't watch a, an hour TV show or whatever, uh, but just make it a priority to get to bed on a regular basis at the same time. And you won't need caffeine. Um, you won't need a pre-workout in the afternoon because you're just on. You just have the energy there. Uh, and yes, it will dip off later on the day, but there's not this like aching tiredness that I remember from the times where I used to let sleep kind of be a, a lower priority for me if I was going out or studying too too late at night or whatever it was. Um, you think you get away with it, but that feeling of like, been hit by a truck as you get up after like four hours sleep uh for instance you know that all goes away and i think as you get older you mature and maybe you're taking on more responsibilities like work or with a business you're gonna you can't perform without getting good sleep and it's probably one of the biggest problems in the world today for at least the western audience yeah definitely uh, and i would say that uh, i don't know if the meme is still going around but uh, perhaps perhaps many Many of you have seen the like, oh, team no sleep, and uh, I'll sleep when I'm dead, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. wake up hustle, after I only grind. yeah hustle hustle grind, wake up after four hours of sleep. Uh, I don't have the time. I mean, that's uh, that's not true in the list for me. This is my yeah, it, it is it is a cope. Uh, this is my perspective. I need to be. I need to have my mind as sharp as possible to be as productive as possible. So yeah. I'd rather have one, two, three hours of super productivity when I've optimized every single thing, including my sleep, of course, than to have a, a grind day for 10 hours where I work at 80% uh, of my brain's capacity. Yep. So it's a bit similar to having a heavy deadlift session. You do it in, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, you have all your sets done, but the 24 hours before those sets, it's all about preparing. You need to eat well, you need to sleep mm -hmm. well, you need to hit that, you know, you, you need to be amped up before the gym, you come in, you need to warm up properly, you need to find the the correct energy. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the, the actual work is 20 minutes lifting, but the preparation is all that matters. Same yeah. thing if we're talking about being productive. I'm currently rewriting Dauntless now, and if I have slept suboptimally, which can happen every once in a while, perhaps it's full moon or perhaps something else uh, happens. Uh, yeah, then then I can't write because then it's not up to the quality I know I can have if I've optimized everything. Yeah. So for me to produce the best possible content in everything I do, to make the best decisions in everything I do, if I haven't slept enough, I'm just postponing it to another day. Yeah. Uh, so for me, sleep, uh, it determines basically everything I do and as I said, yes, of course, you can compensate to a certain extent with caffeine, but you won't have the same level of focus as you would have from a good night's sleep. Yeah, and, and going back to what we were saying before about, you know, what we can do almost politically or for our community, <clears throat> if you need the motivation to start sleeping properly, think about this. Every time you sleep badly, you are reducing the total potential of your life and of your success. And ultimately, the more successful that we as individuals can be in promoting our health or acting in our community or producing content or, yes, making money as well, um, all of that is better when your sleep's optimized. So if you want to have a responsibility to improve the life of yourself so that you can improve the life of your community around you and the country at whole, then that needs to be your responsibility. That needs to be your motivation. And it, you know, that's the little bit that you can do in the, in this situation where these political movements are happening against us and reducing our freedoms. Maybe we're not, you know, we, we can't go to war physically with these people, but we can promote a lifestyle in ourselves that puts us in the best position to help others around you and be strong and be influential and, and powerful because you can't do shit if you have no money. You can't um, support causes that are going to end up being, you kind of ticket out of this situation if you are unsuccessful of yourself. 
And that all starts from getting a good night's sleep so that you're prepared for the day so you can react so that you can, you know, be aware of what's going on around you rather than this like walking zombie going back to why we are weak as a nation is because people aren't getting sleep and people aren't, you know, they're, they're watching blue light before bed. So even if you're getting to bed at a reasonable time and even if you're sleeping for a, enough hours, if you've been staring at your phone, computer or TV right before bed, that's going to impl- influence, uh, you know, the level of your quality of your sleep as well. So it's it's all connected and that's what's so... <clears throat> That's what's so beautiful about it all is because it all flows into each other. And yes, it's it seems like this big system, but ultimately everything is still under your control. It's just about the choices that you make uh, each day. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I thought to elaborate on something you said there as well. Uh, there is a... Um... In, in certain in certain communities, I suppose, uh, or of dissidents, uh, there is that sort of negative crab in a bucket mentality that views making money as something bad or immoral. But yep. uh, there is absolutely nothing you can do without money. Uh, an individual without money is a weak individual because he will always be dependent upon someone else. Uh, and as this old saying goes, um, Money isn't everything, but if you don't have it, it is. Yeah. And it's very true. Very true. Uh, same thing, our, our enemies, they, are, they have a lot of money, to say, uh, to say the least, which means that they can do a lot of things. Just taking such an example as Big Pharma, yeah, they can literally get doctors to do their will by paying them a lot. Uh, and of course, if you have... It's almost like having muscles and strength in a fight. Uh, it's not everything, but it's a huge. It makes a huge difference. And if we're up against a, um, if we want to save our civilization from going under, yeah, we need to come in ready to fight in the best possible way. And that is being done by being the best versions of ourselves and having a yeah. lot of money. Yeah. Uh, simply put. So whenever I see this type of uh, yeah, anti anti money uh, uh, takes from various uh, probably insincere people. I view it either as someone who is only bitter and resentful and doesn't aspire to to do any good to save uh, our our nations or whatever, uh, or it's an enemy who wants us to be weak. It's a it's like yeah. me saying if I if I want to fight someone and I say you know what you shouldn't you shouldn't train uh, because it's it's bad. <laughs> of course I would say that, and of course our enemies would say that it's good yeah. for us to be to be weak and um, and poor yeah. and uh, alone. So yeah. <sighs> Yeah, and that's what a lot of the demoralizing AI headlines is aimed to do. It is literally people's jobs to sit on the internet and for for whoever and advance the ideas and interests of whoever is employing them. So that can be companies where they'll try and organically make social media comments like, oh, I guess this is the best company for this, blah, blah, blah. But it looks like some random avatar, just a, a person or commenting on things that are detrimental to their interests and being like, oh, this is bullshit or conspiracy theory or, you know, these kinds of things <clears throat> to the point where like there's the organic grassroots uh, community that I think the media tries to suppress how many people actually think that way through these, you know, bot armies in a way because of the vast majority of internet users are just passive viewers. Now, yeah. If you can flood that piece of content into the situation where it, it makes more people, it makes it look like more people think that than is actually the case in reality. So again, you have your perspective colored by uh, the, these fake things which are intended to demoralize you, like you said, make you weaker. Uh, and you know that's that's part of the other thing about just the importance of unplugging uh, to a large degree. And a side note with your the people that are negatively doom scrolling are going to be spending more time on the computer because the positive people that want to change their lives they're going to be off the computer more, right? Because they're you know training in the gym or doing other positive things. The people that are on YouTube all day that's already self selecting from a very negative group of people. So if you allow that to color your worldview and 
influence your behavior that is that that is the warfare that's going on now between countries is you know whether it's organizing a political rally uh, between two people <clears> there <throat> are two opposing factions and on the same day you know we saw that happen politically in the u.s or it's simply literal fbi agents or a similar agency of a country being <laughs> you know waging intellectual online warfare yeah yeah i i saw there was a story in um uh, in uh, in the united states about the the fbi also they had some sort of really radical group they had set up with you know and uh, the the point of it was to get disgruntled youth which i mean i understand many many are angry what's going on yeah. uh but the the power is to be and this is a, a heads up i i give this heads up as many times as possible because i know a lot of young guys they need to hear it if you if you get approached by someone who is promoting a really uh, violent rhetoric uh be be on guard because they usually might be feds trying to get you to say something that will incriminate you yeah. uh and also to keep in mind here is that the the powers that be they aren't afraid in the least of some youth going on a, a violent spree they will only ever use that as an opportunity to silence dissidents what they are afraid of however is a mass political movement of uh say say in america if all truckers in the entire country during the election that said like okay we don't believe this election was being done in a fair manner now no trucks will go for 72 hours yeah that is something the powers that be are deathly afraid of so if someone says oh you know the solution is we need to do something violent they are probably feds who want to rile you up into yeah getting you to incriminate yourself they are afraid of a lot of things and that is again such a thing as all truckers deciding to go on a strike because they believe their their votes got uh, tampered with um so that's something to keep in mind for the younger audience be, be cautious when someone is promoting that type of uh, really radical um, rhetoric for sure and ultimately it's a battle of ideas it's gonna get us out of it so things like that you know i, I I want to also just make a note that when I'm saying like the only political solution is improving yourself, that's not necessarily true because I encourage people to get locally involved more so, you know, th there is a real difference you can make there. Uh, and, you know, the people that are making the decisions, they had to run, right? So if no one from our side is running, then of course, it's just going to end up with idiots in charge. It's, yeah, it's as simple exactly. as that. And like, yes, the political system is busted, but I, I think there is still a space for that. And I don't really know in what capacity, but I don't want to discourage people from making moves at a local level or whatever capacity you want to make, because ultimately you do have to take back the political leader power if you want to have a productive society and make the best decisions for the community as you know, we are not seeing right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I agree completely. Uh, this is something I see there is a popular means meme saying that the solution isn't political but it is political to a very large extent and politics it's so much broader than what some might think it's not only about a an election every four years it's about as you say getting into a, a local level because a lot of decisions are being taken at a local level uh sure it might not be as glamorous as following the american presidential election or the election in france or whatever it might be but a lot of power lies within that uh, those local institutions yeah so now for example in sweden we have a an election to a church a church election uh and i encourage all swedes to go and vote for alternative for sweden uh will it make a world of a difference no but it will make a small difference and we need to be ready to come in to fight every type of fight whether it be yeah. in church politics or in electoral politics or in in spreading uh, a message of the importance of sleep and fasting uh, or it might be against porn or it might be uh, whatever it whatever it is we need to be able to take the fight on as many levels as possible including uh, something that's might seem um 
might not seem as important as a church election, but it counts. Everything counts. And yeah. uh, I would also encourage everyone to, yeah, we need to take back every institution. We need to take the fight in, uh, in the schools system because now we have, especially in Sweden, many teachers are left-wing radicals so i need to so i would hope many many guys who are a bit more reasonable can come into the school system become teachers so they can teach mm. the coming generations uh, better values simply there's, so, uh, there's yeah, the, really nothing more impactful um in a lot of people's lives than a, a good teacher and yeah you know you you have memories of yourself like when i was at high school there's the teacher that just really engaged with you and really treated you like a human or sorry like a an adult and would inspire you to learn things that is one of the most amazing skills and if 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 you can do that uh and promote healthy values along with it and hard work and all the rest of it that uh, so many people are going to the public schools and it's probably why we're in the mess that we're in now is the educational system that most kids go through is fundamentally broken and taken over by Marxists and uh, just isn't, especially college, uh, but most public schools as well, critical race theory and, and all of that nonsense that's just intended to dumb down the population and get them to think something that's you know, objectively not the best thing uh, for people to believe in a well-functioning society. Like that is really, if the more people that are educated properly, the more educated people can be in making their decisions and the decisions they make being what business they want to support, food, um, how they treat other people, that all stems from the programming that you get as a kid. And if the majority of kids are going through schools and their parents are disinterested and and just want to give them off to a kind of childcare in a way, then you're just going to end up with a population that doesn't know what's happening to them, uh, believes things that aren't necessarily true, and hate their own country as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, also this critical race theory, the, the powers that be... Uh, <laughs> If we're talking about, yeah, again, big pharma or the the banking, the central banking system or whatever, quote unquote, elites we're talking about, they have a great interest in focusing everything on race and the the specter of racism. Because if all people, if all if all the population, they focus on, uh, okay, now a a black man got detained by the police in the United States, that's the big news. Okay, that lets a lot of other things fly under the radar, yeah. such as scandals in the big pharma or the Epstein story, uh, yeah. blackmailing honeypots. I mean, those type of scandals can fly under the radar if everyone is so concerned with uh, racism in America. And it, there was a case in Sweden as well that first we had the corona hysteria, then George Floyd died, and there was a massive demonstration in in sweden of all places uh, mm-hmm. for um to to say oh white supremacy is so bad yeah. and of course the uh, the the uh, wall street individuals when they a few years ago they they got demonstrated by occupy wall street they are only all too happy to support any any narrative that can distract from what they might be doing. Same thing with all other corrupt uh, institutions and and whatnot. So uh, so yeah, focusing on race, it's um, it's a good uh, way for them to hide their own uh, uh, misdoings. And of course, same thing with a lot of big companies. They virtue signal about okay, maybe a sports company. They have a they support a transgender athlete. Uh, mm. They do it so they can score good good points so they can hide what they're actually doing with yeah. slave labor etc so the more someone virtue signals uh, about progressive and woke agenda the more skeletons they might have to hide true that's that's a good way to look at it <clears throat> it's uh it kind of shifted right people don't realize what the kind of the background of it was was the occupy wall street movement um tax the rich you know one percent 
kind of messaging when enough people you know that was the media narrative for a while but they realized that they actually had whipped people up into a frenzy to be angry at the biggest businesses which is them which is who owns the media companies so they're like fuck yeah let's <laughs> that, that didn't work out uh let's switch to racism boom and you can actually go look at the analytics uh, on google of search terms or news terms uh at a particular point in time and as occupy wall street kind of fell in its uh, enthusiasm, which was fired up by the media, racism articles started coming out. And, you know, racist this, racist racist that. You can see the uptick uh, in news articles that uh, have been written. And the more that happens, the more media focuses on it, um, you know, all these protests and things, that becomes the spotlight uh, to kind of focus on, like you said, so all these other issues go under the rug. But what it also does is it pits the races against each other. And mm. what's better to the ruling class than people arguing amongst themselves, angry at each other, not realizing that the the governmental issues and decisions or the the big companies are the ones actually, you know, creating the negative circumstances you might find yourself in. So when you can make uh, people argue amongst themselves, it used to be class, now it's race, then you have a distracted population. And that can be, again, profited off of uh, much better than an aware one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. Uh, so let's let's change tact uh, a little bit here. Um, someone asked me to ask you about romance uh, and how to develop it. You've obviously got your lovely wife, uh, Julia. If any female mm-hmm. listeners uh, on Instagram, at Julia's Wellness Tips, great profile. Uh, if you wanted to kind of the feminine kind of view of everything, but what are your views on romance and how would you develop it? Someone like a young guy who hasn't necessarily had a long-term relationship or been romantic. Uh, yeah. First and foremost, thank you for the, the mention there. Yeah. She, she puts out good content, uh, primarily for females, but yeah, of course it's general health advice. So yeah. guys can, can, uh, partake as well. Um, First, what I would say to, to guys is connected to what we talked about earlier about your view of, uh, of yourself. Uh, that is what you need to start always in, in basically everything you do. do mm. You need to look yourself in a mirror and become comfortable with yeah. who you are because all women, they are very good at picking up. Um, Although there is a uh, there is a thing to be said about contraceptive pills that they might mess up the uh, yes the stop taking the pill. Yeah, exactly. It needs to be um, that actually needs to be banned outright. I would say, uh, yeah. and for a woman, it will impact the way you your natural attraction works. Uh, but for a guy, anyway, the first thing you need to do is to be comfortable with yourself. And then someone might say, "Oh, but you know, it's easy for you to say, perhaps because you are this and that." But uh, it's it's all in your head. Uh, the way you view the world, the world will view you. Yes. Uh, so look yourself in the mirror. Become comfortable. If you aren't comfortable, then sort out what you need to do to be comfortable. So when you have a uh, a level of confidence that you can carry around with you then is the time to look for females if you do it before you're totally comfortable with yourself you might get burnt you might say oh i have tried to talk to five different girls in in five months time and no one has been uh eager to they haven't <laughs> reciprocated my you know my, my attention they don't want to talk to me they don't want to give me my number or whatever then you might say to yourself aha uh these women they are hopeless and and nothing uh, i will never go anywhere with these women now if you wait a bit until you are perfectly comfortable with yourself when you go out with life with a you know a a good posture you radiate good vibes you will notice that women will pick up on that and that will reinforce your your sense of value so you have a one good encounter with a with a female Uh, it doesn't need to be anything uh you know, overly complicated. It can just be mm-hmm. a, a short conversation, uh, maybe a, a bit of flirting or whatever, but something quite innocent. But 
you your mind will take that as a victory and the next time you will meet a female you will be even more confident charismatic likable you will portray uh, good vibes she will pick up on that uh, and then the third time you meet someone you will be even more confident and that mm. all of those small victories they will add up and then you might stumble upon a girl and she will instantly be attracted to you because you have you have such a good view of yourself already um so so that is the absolutely first step i would say to to build yourself up before so it's almost mm -hmm. similar to as i mentioned about the deadlift you know you prepare for 24 hours you get in a lot of food you get in a lot of sleep then you can do it uh same thing with women so if you are a young guy who you might be new to um self-improvement and the the spiritual aspect of things uh, don't be so hasty with uh putting girls first put yourself first and then when you have gotten to the stage where you are ready when you have loaded up uh with your um your own development then it might be the time to you know start small talk a bit with some girl hair talk a, some more with some other one and then the the universe will uh, deliver someone onto you yeah. uh, if um hopefully that's the case and then of course something you talk a lot about uh semen retention uh, oh, yeah it's something that uh, you need to do it uh, you need to do it uh, definitely because if you if you continuously uh, watch porn and you and you bust uh bust your balls <laughs> It, uh, it will drain your uh, your um, male vitality, and that's also something that people will pick up on. You you ha don't have the same glow. You don't have the same. You don't radiate power uh, the same way if you're constantly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah. So that was. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So that's uh, getting a girl. How about keeping a girl or being romantic in a relationship? And maybe I'll speak about the the senior attention thing because a lot of people. So porn, no porn. Obviously, we're past that. We don't need to say porn's bad. Everyone gets that now. Um, that's the worst case scenario: is you're watching porn and also masturbating and busting your load all the time. That's a bad situation to be in. But if you're within a relationship, even if you're having sex with a girl and busting every single time and let's say you you live with your girlfriend so that's five six nights a week that's a lot you know if if you're ejaculating each time uh you really are throwing away a lot of your central sexual energy that can be utilized for other things you know sexual energy is creative energy so if you are constantly depleting yourself, even if it's with your girlfriend and you both have a great time doing it, uh, it is still uh, quote unquote negative. You know, I don't want to say that's a negative, but your capacity to be the most powerful version of yourself, be the most creative version of yourself, uh, be on top of business, have the energy as well. You need less sleep when you're properly retaining your sin for long periods, longer periods of time. And it doesn't have to be a ridiculous amount. Um, although I do find the longer you do it, the kind of more power and the more f benefits you get. But once a week, you know, that, that's a good aim for people that are regularly uh, having sex is once a week, um, I'm, I'm going to come or whatever. The rest of the time, you're saving that particular concentration of energy uh, for yourself and your creative endeavors. But then what you'll find is your love for your partner grows exponentially as well. And it's not just a sexual love. It's a, this, this real appre appreciation uh, and connection on a deeper level. And it also makes your sex better as well for the same kind of reasons. You feel a lot closer to your partner, more desire for your partner, and you just are able to connect that energy uh, a, 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 a larger amount. And that is what makes a relationship and romance so beautiful and more accessible, I find. Yeah, definitely. Very good point. Uh, that's also something I might point out that uh, having, having sex maybe every day, it can turn it into a predictable thing. And predictability, especially for women, can be, you know, it, it loses the excitement of it. So even if you are in a long-term relationship, you might even be married, I would, anyway, I would suggest having sex less, but whenever you do it, it becomes uh, a more intense experience because yeah. of course, if you are um, abstaining a bit 
the the pleasure of it will be much higher. And I mean, it's the same thing as as eating. If you're hungry, it yeah. will taste better if you're hungry. Yeah. And if you haven't, if you if you aren't doing it every day, uh, if you're doing it every day, it almost becomes like a a physiological need instead of something uh, a real high point, a real ecstasy. So. Yeah. I view it at least in in this way that the sex is um, a really good experience, uh, a true pleasure of life. Make the most out of it. And by making the most out of it, it's not to have it on a routine basis every day, but it's about having it every once in a while um, and making it into something really special. Uh, Mm -hmm. Then, of course, also uh, some advice for all guys that sex is so it's a gift to your woman uh, it's not the other way around it's something you give to her and mm-hmm. if she can long for it a bit her pleasure her pleasure will be uh, bigger as well but if she yeah. if it comes to that that she feels that she has to have sex with you yeah it's not good in the list so view it in the sense that have it every once in a while uh and view it as your gift to mm. her and not the other way around. Yeah. And I think even with having sex a lot, as long as you're not busting every time, then the routineness almost doesn't matter because you're ascending to higher levels of energy and pleasure and connectedness each time because it's, you know, theoretically still retaining. You're going longer without that uh, physical ejaculation. Um, so it becomes more of a magical thing each and every time so that's really fun as a couple to kind of go into uh with each other and and explore so yeah all good stuff on that um i think that'll do us man we've been going a while all right yeah time time uh, time flies it's uh, well over an hour but yeah good uh, good energy good vibes (laughs) (laughs) good vibes always good vibes my man um thank you so much the golden one uh did you want to just speak about uh what you're doing uh what's coming up for you uh, in the coming weeks yeah sure first and foremost i'd like to offer my heartfelt thank you to you uh, my dear Solbra for uh, giving me a uh, shout out on Instagram. I I was banned earlier in the year at 32k. Uh, now I'm back up to 10k, so that feels good. It's yeah. um, we'll it, be back. It feels uh, yeah, it's it's good to be back. Uh, and and the amount of support I got, uh, really heartfelt, uh, put me in a really good mood. Got the it was sort of like a momentum that got triggered. So I feel yeah. feel really good ever since cool. then. Um, so yeah, but otherwise the, the main priority now is I'm rewriting Dauntless, uh, when I released it in 2019, it was just after my daughter was born and I had a lot of things to, to do all good things, all good and productive things, but I didn't quite have the time to, to do the, um, to do justice to the mm-hmm. book. So now I have over the summer, I have restructured it. I'm adding quite a bit of text, clarifying stuff, improving the grammar, the cool. layout of it. So it will be a, um, a, a new book. So that is what I'm uh, fully focusing on now. So I'm, uh, I'm sleep maxing, I'm health maxing, <laughs> I'm productivity maxing, and I'm vibes nice. maxing to, <laughs> to optimize everything for uh, the book so um so yeah that's the uh, what i'm awesome. what i'm doing now. cool man well is it going to be dauntless 2 or just dauntless revised what are you calling it uh no just uh, just dauntless um and uh it cool. might have a different call cover or something like that but otherwise it's just uh, just dauntless amazing well I'm looking forward to reading it. I have the the first one, of course, uh, and um, I'm, I'll keep a lookout for that. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll send you down a signed copy. It would be my pleasure. Amazing. Looking forward to it. All right, brother. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the Soulcast, and I'm sure I'll speak to you again. All right. Thanks for having me. Good to talk to you as always. See ya. See ya. See ya.